All right, please stand as you are able as we join in hymn number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. as we go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful morning and for the ability to be here and worship together. We thank you for fellowship and family and the honor of being able to worship you in your church. We ask that you be with all of us to strengthen, restore, and inspire us. Please be with Pastor Jasmine as she delivers an important message from you. Please let it impact our hearts and motivate us into action so that we are changed by the time we leave this place this morning. Please be with everyone gathered here. Fill our hearts with your presence and your message today and every day. Amen. Please stand as you're able once again as we join together in song in hymn 84, Thank You, Lord.
join me in the affirmation of faith, the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, you may be seated. I am Jasmine Smothers. I'm the lead pastor here at Atlanta First United Methodist Church, and it is my joy and honor to welcome you to worship today. We exist at Atlanta First to worship God, to serve others, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta. We have no other reason for being, so we are so glad that you have joined us uh, today in worship. I want to invite you to join the movement here at Atlanta First of worship, serve, grow, and engage by pulling out these connect cards that are in your bulletins. On one side, you'll find an invitation to let us know that you were here. Relationships are so important to us, and we need to know whether you're here or not so that we can say thank you or follow up with you when you are missing. Amen? And on the back side of that, we want to invite you to get involved in the life of the church this week and in the life of our community. How will you worship? How will you serve? How will you grow? And how will you engage? Um, don't forget that Aaron has invited you to the Habitat information session immediately following worship. I know that you want to get involved in Habitat. Even if you cannot swing a hammer or stand on a ladder, there are many significant ways for you to help us build this house in the city. So please come to that information session. And we need you on Tuesday. Um, our, our safe house coordinator, Mary Jackson, is out of town this week, and so we need all of our volunteers here for safe house. Even if you cannot be here at 4 o'clock, you can meet us at safe house at 6 o'clock um, to serve and to worship in that place. If you have questions, call the church office this week, and we'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. Don't forget about growing through Sunday school, small groups, um, our new online study that begins uh, this week in May, and um, engaging with Pastor Jonathan. We want to be in prayer for Pastor Jonathan today. Some of you will know that we, um, we stole Pastor Jonathan in the middle of his contextual education uh, experience, which is like a residency for clergy while they're in seminary. And he is finishing up that responsibility today and preaching at the Ben Hill Church this morning. Um, so we want to continue to be in prayer for him. There are so many um, other things that we need to discuss this morning, but I want to ask Jill Brown to come to come up here um, for a few minutes. Um, many of you will know that Jill is our, our fearless finance team leader, and um, she is doing a yeoman's job and just a phenomenal job helping us to be good stewards of what God has called us to do. And Jill yesterday graduated from an intensive leadership development program for United Methodist Laity. That's you. You're a United Methodist lay leaders, and she has spent nine months, 
Is it since longer? November. Since yeah. November. Um, at Leadership UMC, working on projects. She has given away her, set, her Friday nights and Saturdays um, to be developed, to grow as a leader on behalf of our congregation, our community, and our church. So we want to thank you, Jill, and congratulate you on your graduation from Leadership UMC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing for Christ in the church. She's embodying what it means to worship, serve, grow, and engage in this city and beyond. I want to invite our children forward um, for a moment in worship today. Good morning, sunshine. Who is that? Your bunny, your bunny's so cute here. You want to sit down with me this morning? So, you know, we've been talking about training and exercising, right? And we've talked a lot about what it means to, good morning, bud, how are you? So we've been talking about, we have to be a team together, right? And we talked about stretching. Ooh. And we talked about resistance training. And you remember last week, Pastor Jonathan brought his Legos. Yeah. yeah, and we talked about how Jesus is so important to us that we can't do life without Jesus. You remember that? Pastor Jonathan is so nice. We like him a lot. <laughs> and, um, and so today, what else do you think we need to exercise? One. What do we need to exercise? One. Okay. Walk. Here's a hint. Walk. Walk. What's that? Our hearts. We have to exercise our hearts, right? So the experts who tell us about exercising and training, um, they tell us that, you know, we have to stretch, we have to do strength and resistance training, and we have to get our hearts up. Isn't that right, Dr. Bob? Dr. Bob is a doctor who works on hearts. How cool is that? So um, in our hearts, how do we exercise our hearts? Do you know? No? Jump roping. Yes, jump roping exercises our hearts. What else? Um, walking. Walking exercises our hearts. What else? Running. Running exercises our hearts. You guys are on it this morning. Why do you think it's so important to exercise our hearts? Um, because, because without... If you don't exercise, you don't get um, muscled. That's right. Our heart is a muscle, right? And if we don't exercise our heart, that muscle gets weak and it doesn't do its job. It doesn't give us oxygen and move the blood through our bodies like it's supposed to, right? Right? Well, Jesus wants us to exercise our hearts too. Do you know how Jesus wants us to exercise our hearts? Can you think of some ways? Well, running, but you know, do you, you know who Jesus wants us to run to? No. People who are sick or afraid or feel like they're left out. The way Jesus wants us to exercise our hearts is by being really, really nice and kind, talking to people who don't have any friends at school and being their friend and going out of our way to be kind to strangers and people that we might otherwise be like, mm, you're not my kind of person, right? So that's what I want you to do this week. I want you to be very nice, even at home. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> and at school, and to all your teachers, and even to people who might not be your friends. Because that's what Jesus wants us to do. And because Jesus loves us so much, we want to make sure we love Jesus back by exercising our hearts, right? You think you can do that? Okay, let's pray. 
Gracious and loving God, thank you for the gift of this day. Thank you for giving us hearts with which to love. Help us to look beyond what we want, O oh God, and to see your people. Help us to love each other and to be kind to everyone. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. All right. You guys have a great time in children's church with Miss Susie and Miss Norfesia. I think it's going to be great today.
Amen. Do you feel the presence of the Lord in this place today? Do you feel the presence of the Lord in this place today? As we prepare for our prayer time this morning, I want to invite you to pull out your prayer cards, to fill them out, to bring them to the altar rail with you, or place them in the offering plates after prayer time. We want to lift in prayer this morning. First, we want to welcome back Bill Sims, who has been recovering um, from surgery, and we're so glad that Bill is back with us today. We also want to celebrate the upcoming birthday of our very own Jeannie Spencer this week. Jeannie's in the back getting ready um, for offering this morning. So we're thrilled to celebrate with Jeannie. Um, continue to keep your pastors and staff in prayer and the staff of our day school and all the educators and students and school staff who are winding it down, y'all. <laughs> um, continue to keep them all in prayer. We also want to um, have a special uh, prayer for Jay. Um, Jay today, many of you know that Jay worships with us. He's a student at Georgia Tech, and this is his last Sunday with us um, until he comes back in the fall. So we want to um, be in prayer for Jay uh, this, this summer, and we'll miss you, Jay, um, and praying for your last finals and, and all of those things um, that are happening. I want to also ask you to be in prayer for our staff care team, which is our SPR. Um, they are moving toward the final round of interviews for our director of music and worship. And um, do we want to bathe that process in prayer so that God sends us the right one? Amen. Amen. Um, we also want to be in prayer for the Council of Bishops. I was in Chicago on Friday for a prep meeting. Our Council of Bishops are all of the United Methodist bishops from all around the world who are in a special meeting this week um, to consider the final plans of the Commission on the Way Forward and to make some recommendations about how the United Methodist Church will be the church in the world uh, moving forward. So this is a critical time time for our denomination and for our church and we want to be in prayer for those um, for our bishops and the staff that are there supporting them we also want to continue to be in prayer and start in prayer um, for monica berry and her four-year-old nephew for whom we'll be building this habitat house and finally, um, I want you to be in prayer for Terry and Wayne Pierce. Um, they are missing from us this morning. Terry's cousin, Sherry, Cheryl Bailey, passed away suddenly this week, and we want to be um, in continued prayer with and for them as well. Um, friends, I want you to take this prayer list home with you. Put it on your refrigerator or on your night table or wherever it is that you will look at it and you will see and you will lift up all of the names um, that are on this prayer list today. You're invited to the altar rail for a time of prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls us from a world of care and bids us at our Father's throne make all our wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, our souls have often found relief and oft escaped the tempter snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are so grateful for the gift of this day. 
We're grateful that after all the rain, we see the sunshine, oh God. We're grateful that you are faithful to us when we are not faithful to you and when we are not faithful to ourselves, oh God. We thank you for the opportunity to worship and serve you, to grow together and to honor you by engaging this city, oh God. We praise you and we thank you that you continue to give us hands and feet so so that we might be Christ in this city and beyond, oh God. Lord, there's much to pray for today. We pray for our council of bishops and the work that is ahead as they seek to lead and guide us as a church. We pray for our world, for the Korean Peninsula, for global health and the state of global affairs around this nation, around this world, oh God. We pray for our country and our leaders in the state of politics in this nation, O oh God. Make us to be a people who are after your heart, O oh God, and who love each other and go out of our way to provide radical hospitality to our neighbors and to strangers, O oh God. We thank you that you remind us every time we receive communion that we have failed to be an obedient church that we have not done your will, that we have broken your law, that we have rebelled against your love, that we have not heard the cry of the needy. And we are so grateful that you allow us to pray that you would forgive us and free us for joyful obedience. Free us, O oh God, to build habitat homes. Free us, O oh God, to serve dinner and to, serve and to be a soul bomb to those who are under housed or not housed at safe house, O oh God. Free us so that we can be your hands and feet through Midtown Assistance Center. Free us so that we might be your hands and feet through the Atlanta First Day School, O oh God. Free us so that we might be a light in this city and transform it for you, O oh God. Continue to be the healing, God. Continue to be the comforting, God, as we lift up the Cunningham family and the McMichael family and Ellen Hicks, oh God. We continue to pray for Jewel Adams, for the Chandlers, for Marley Franklin and Betty Small and all of those who are listed on our prayer list, oh God. And in this season, we lift a special prayer for our active duty military and first responders knowing that you keep us safe, oh God, and that you allow your people to aid you in keeping each other safe. Lord, we thank you that your healing is palatable and palpable to us. We thank you that we don't have to look back and wonder if you were present then or wonder if you are present now because you continue to show up and show out on our behalf so holy spirit pour out on us and have your way in this place oh god thank you for teaching us to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we move into a time of offering and giving, we want to remind you that nothing happens without your support. Habitat houses don't get built, people don't get fed, people don't get housed or clothed unless you give generously back a portion of what God has gifted you with. So we invite you to give generously at this time. Amen. Draw me close to you, 
Never let me go. Never let me go. I will lay it all down again. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my one desire. You are my desire. No one else will do, Lord. No one else will do. No one else can take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. God, that you're right there. Help me know you. I may not be feeling my best this morning, God, but you woke me up and started me Help on my way. Me know you. There's somebody in this place that needs to know that you'll never leave them know. So let's say all together, if you believe that God is really, he sing, that he's with you this morning, just sing with us, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where the God, draw us nearer, draw us nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh God, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you thanks and praise for allowing us into your presence and for bringing us here so that we might have a fresh encounter with you. 
So now, God, speak to our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Transform us so that we might be an instrument of transformation for others. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So here we are on our way to Pentecost, and we're getting ready for the party called Pentecost, right? And we're training so that we might be ready to show up at the party. We've decided that you don't just wake up and show up at a party, but you have to be prepared. And so the first week, Pastor Jonathan told us that if we're going to be ready for the party and we're going to do our training, Aaron, Pastor Jonathan told us that we have to remember that we don't do this on our own, that this is indeed a team sport. It's going to take each and every one of us to be ready. And then we talked about how it's so important when you are training, Bill, that you have to stretch first. Amen? See, I was hard-headed this week, and I didn't stretch before I stood up and walked for about two hours in a meeting and on a tour at CNN Center, and I jacked up my leg, hence the... You have to stretch. And, and once we're training and we realize that we're in this together and it's a team sport and we're stretching, we have to be ready to stand up and stand our ground in the name of Jesus in an uncompromising resistance. We forget our own power because we forget that we can stand boldly in the face of fear and evil and say, move in the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, <laughs> every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So as we move through the book of Acts, which we remember is written by the gospel writer of Luke as well, we need to remember that we've got to exercise our hearts. Because it's okay if you have strong hips and strong legs and stretched arms, but if your heart isn't working then the rest of it doesn't matter. So we go to Acts chapter 8 this morning, and we begin in the 26th verse. I want to invite you to pull out your Bibles, your electronic devices, or anything that will help you read along. I am beginning in the 26th verse. Acts 8 Verse 26, reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go. Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went, and now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now, the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. Like a lamb, silent before its shearer. 
so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the Enoch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So your heart is a muscle that must be exercised. If you don't exercise this muscle, it gets atrophied and it doesn't do its job, which is to pump blood and help oxygen come up through your lungs and to keep you moving. This kind of training is called cardiorespiratory fitness, and it helps the efficiency of how we move and breathe and live through our bodies. It has a direct impact on our ability to endure, and it also has a direct impact on how strong we are. Cardio adds years to your life. It increases your good cholesterol and decreases your bad cholesterol. It lowers your blood pressure and it lowers the resting pulse of your heart so that your heart doesn't have to work as hard. Cardio fitness helps us lose or maintain weight. It helps prevent heart, heart disease and stroke. It lowers our risk for diabetes, and it reduces our stress levels. Praise be to God. It boosts our immune system, increases our energy, and improves our sleep. I don't know about you, but that sounds like some of the things that the church needs today, amen? And some of the things that we need today, don't we need to be stronger? Don't we need endurance? Don't we need the ability to lower our stress levels a little bit? Can't we do without some heart disease? Can't we do without diabetes? Can't we do without heart attacks and strokes? in our world. So today, I want to invite us as the people of God, both individually and as a team, to get our cardio fitness in order. Philip, Philip was one of the strongest evangelists of his time. And this is amazing because Philip is one of the strongest evangelists, the spreaders of the gospel of Jesus Christ right after the death of Jesus when people are killing Jesus' followers left and right. By the time we're in chapter 9 in Acts, we're full on into the persecution of those that would follow Jesus. See, Christianity doesn't exist yet. 
The Christian church doesn't exist yet. These are mostly Jews and Gentiles who love this man called Jesus. The text starts with then. Then an angel. So we need to know what happens before then. See, right before that, we get to meet Saul. Do you know Saul? Do you remember Saul? Yes, this is Saul, the persecutor of the church, who has an encounter with the Most High God and becomes Paul, who is one of the foundational figures of our faith. See, you can't have an encounter with God and remain the same. You can't do cardio fitness and your heart stay at your feet or low beating. So Philip has preached in Samaria where Saul is killing people left and right because they proclaim a man named Jesus and Saul's persecution backfires. Because all the people who run away to avoid being killed... They go into various lands further and further and further out, and they tell new people about Jesus. And the text says that great joy has broken out because people are being healed and people are receiving the Holy Spirit. That's our job. When we work out our cardio, when we work out our hearts, we are encountering people with the transformational gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and great joy will break out. Oh, you don't seem to believe me this morning. There is all sitting there like, "Uh uh-huh, okay. What does she want from me? See, there was a process. Philip was the front man. He'd go out and stand out on the side of the road or in the middle of a field like John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, and he would tell the people about this man who came and healed people and set them free and set a new world order in place, a world order that called for radical love and radical inclusion and a radical way of interacting with each other. And then the apostles, you remember them, Peter and John. We've talked about them a lot this month. Peter and John would come behind Philip and they would lay hands on people and the power of the Holy Spirit would heal those who couldn't walk and heal those who couldn't see and heal those who were hungry or afraid or cast out from society. And all the people could do in response to that was shout glory, hallelujah. And go tell somebody else. You see, they didn't sit in church and stare at the preacher and say, oh, that sounds good. But I ain't doing that. Peter's do it. Philip is doing his job, preaching and teaching. Great joy is spreading out. The word of Jesus Christ is getting out. The gospel, which literally means good news, is spreading over and over and over. You remember the Great Commission? And then an angel of the Lord shows up and interrupts some things. The angel of the Lord shows up and says, Philip, you're doing an okay job here, but I need to send you somewhere else on behalf of God the Father, and I need you to go not your normal way, but through the wilderness. 
Now, it's our nature not to want to go through the wilderness, isn't it? We have a saying in today's society about green grass, and we like to be where the green grass is, and we always talk about being where the green grass is. Well, I saw something this week that said the grass is green where you water it. We like to stay where we are comfortable. We like to travel the way that has our favorite stops and our favorite Starbucks and our favorite place to eat. We like to travel the way that we know, the way that we feel is safe, the way that gets us to where we think we ought to be. But the angel of the Lord sends Philip out of his way through the wilderness. It would have been longer. It would have been more uncomfortable. And there wouldn't have been a Starbucks on the way to keep us awake. But Philip doesn't push back. Instead, he just goes. (laughs) He's learned that when God says do something, it's just better to go ahead and do it. When he gets to where he's supposed to be, he encounters an unlikely character and his obedience works for him. How many of you know what a eunuch is? A eunuch is a man who's been castrated sometimes before puberty because his one and only purpose in life is to serve in the royal court of women. It was a protection mechanism that they would not have any purpose or reason or ability to encounter women in any way other than to serve them. The problem with this is that in Hebrew society, if you were like a eunuch, you were not allowed into the temple. You could not worship in public. And yet this eunuch, he travels all the way from Ethiopia in a chariot, which we have to note means that he has some money and some influence and some power because most people during that time didn't drive Cadillacs. They walked on their two feet. He knows he cannot enter the temple. And yet he travels all of that way because he has to get close to the place of worship. So we have to imagine that when the text said he has worshipped, it means he's worshipped sitting in his chariot outside of the temple. And another reason we know that he had some means and influence and wealth is because he had a scroll of the book of Isaiah. Only the priest had those. And here God goes again, making Philip do things that most of us wouldn't do. Hey, walk up to that outcast in our society. Oh, yeah, and he's a, he's a person of power and privilege in his society, so he might not want anything to do with you because you've been walking in the wilderness and you're kind of dusty and kind of dirty and you might even stink a little bit. But walk up to his chariot And see if he needs anything. Are you catching how extraordinary this text is? How chock full of a counter-cultural way of being it is. You don't get to encounter the Most High God and stay the same. So Philip walks up. And he hears the the Ethiopian eunuch, he hears him reading off of the scroll, and the eunuch is afraid. He's confused. He's reading Isaiah like a sheep that was led out to slaughter. 
hey, Philip, is this talking about me? Does this apply to me? Because coming here and existing as a eunuch is like being led out to a, like a sheep to slaughter. I don't belong. I'm not included. And actually, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says that I'm not allowed to worship and that I should not be included in the worshiping community. But here I am. So which is right, Isaiah or Deuteronomy? Sounds familiar to what we're going through into society today, does it not? Our council of bishops are gathering to decide what radical inclusion looks like in the United Methodist Church for the days to come. And I don't find it awkward or even an accident that Monday, last Monday, we celebrated 50 years of being United Methodists across the world. Before that, we were a split church. We were the Methodist North and the Methodist South, and we were split over racism. And now we're threatening to split over homophobicism. And yet, we're encountering a text that is about radical inclusion, that this man, who by his physical self makes him unacceptable to the worshiping community, which he had no control over, and yet God sends Philip all the way to him to help him realize that he is a child of God. And that no one gets to tell him how and where he can worship. Philip shows up to proclaim the word of Jesus Christ and it changes everything for this eunuch and for everybody that see. He proclaims the new world order. He proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ that said everybody is welcome at this table. My preaching professor, Tom Long, he writes about this text. Walls of prejudice and prohibition that stood for generations came tumbling, blown down by the breath of God's Holy Spirit. And another man who felt lost and humiliated was found and restored in the wideness of God's grace in Jesus Christ. Friends, this text is not about a random encounter. This text is about a calculated road map for how we treat God's people. See, if we get our hearts right, if we stretch our heart muscles, if we get our cardio training done, that leads us to a place of radical inclusion that forces us to step out of ourselves and to see every human being as a child of God created and knit in their mother's womb with the very same breath blown into them. Nothing can keep anyone out of the church community and relationship with God. Cardio training is hard. You want to quit while you're on that elliptical. You tell your trainer, I can't do it. You can't run one more step. You can't walk one more mile. You cannot move one more inch. But if you find yourself putting one foot in front of another and front of another and front of another and moving further and further out of your comfort zone and doing and extending the love of Jesus Christ in radical ways, you might find your heart strengthening. And when you find your heart strengthening, 
strengthening. You might find it easier not to hate people. You might find it easier not to judge people. You might find it easier to have your own fresh encounter with Jesus Christ that leads to the Holy Ghost changing some things in your life. Here's the heart of the matter. You exist to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And that good news is news that we can expect to be changed by and that we must fling the doors wide open so that everybody might hear. Jesus said, come to me all. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. There were no asterisks. There were no buts. Jesus said, come and experience the feast. For there you might find abundant life. Just like young people and gay people, people from other countries, immigrants, black people, white people, all kinds of people, they know the words of scripture. It's not about the ability to know the words of scripture. It's about the ability to be able to understand them and interpret them and live them in such a way that every time you walk, you are walking lockstep with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. We don't get to decide who worships God. Most people already have an idea about the teachings of Christianity. The problem is they have a problem with Christians because we've been people of exclusion We've been hypocritical people. We've been silent people when we should have used our voice for justice and mercy and grace in this world. We've been racist. We've been sexist. We've been ageist. We've been homophobic and xenophobic. And we have not lived the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is time to say I am sorry. So that when people see water, they see Jesus. Philip rode with the eunuch on the way. He didn't just leave him there after he told him the stories of Jesus Christ. He traveled with him for a while. He didn't hand him a track and say, you figure this out for yourself. He didn't hand him a Bible and say, you figure out what this means and what this says. He traveled with him. He journeyed with him. And when they passed water, because the eunuch knew the story and he was beginning to understand it, when they passed the water, the eunuch said, there is water behold I see water and I know that that water can change my life so what's stopping you from baptizing me did you notice in your Bible that most translations leave out verse 37 did you see that when we read there was no verse 37 Because we believe that verse 37 was put in by editors later. (laughs) And if we believe that, if we truly believe that, then that turns our Christianity upside down and inside out. Because what verse 37 says is, when the eunuch asked to to be baptized, Philip says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 
But if 37 was put in later by editors, then baptism becomes a means of conversion. You don't have to believe before you encounter the water and the water changes you. The people are missing someone to guide them. The people are missing someone to join them. The people are missing someone to convict them. The people are missing someone to inspire them. Sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ has already been and always been a scandalous act. It's supposed to be dangerous to follow Jesus. I know I'm going to get some emails this week because you don't think the preacher should be saying some of the things that she said from the pulpit today, and that's fine. That's my job. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. And he went on his way rejoicing. What's the condition of your heart? How's your cardio training going? Is it a heart that God would be proud of? Is it a heart that Jesus would be pleased with? Have we stretched ourselves out of our comfort zone so that we might be changed so that our world might find peace and love and grace and mercy? and joy. See, that's the response to receiving the gospel. The response to receiving the gospel is not, oh no, I have another set of rules to follow. The response to receiving the gospel is joy. So how's your heart doing? When people encounter you, do they receive joy? That's the question for today and the question for this week. It's training time. Get ready. In the name of the Father, the Son, And the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. If you need a new encounter with Christ, if you need some joy in your life, don't miss this opportunity to say yes to God or to renew your commitment to God. We're going to stand and sing. And we're going to stand and sing together. And if this is the time for you to say yes to God or to make a commitment to this church, come on down. And if God's still working on you, that's okay too. Come on down and let God work on your heart and your mind and your soul.
understand and sing. Gerald Stacy has come to formally join this church. I bet many of you did not know <laughs> that Gerald is not a member of this church. And so I've got, thank you, Miss Ruby, for coming because we do not journey alone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you've been a Philip to Jerry and we're grateful for you you've been a Philip <laughs> I surrender all. so I've got to ask you some questions okay all right on behalf of the whole church not just the people in this room but the church universal I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If you do, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist, resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all nations and races. If so, say, I do. Friends, I have a question for you. Will you nurture Jerry in Christ's church? That by your teaching and example, he may, that he may be guided, guided to accept God's grace for himself and profess his face openly. If so, say, we will. Jerry, this is your community. And through their own membership vows and through what they just promised, they say that with God's help, they're going to walk with you. And they're going to strengthen and help to guide you and lead you in the ways that lead to life eternal. That's not an easy promise. But they made it to you today before God and each other. So we all say amen. amen. Welcome to the family. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, I'm going to invite you to sit here. I don't want you to have to stand all the time, but sit here so folks can come and welcome you. Friends, you remember that the outsider, the eunuch, became an insider. 
and he became a part of the family because somebody took the time to guide him. So wherever you are on that spectrum, do your job. Do your training. And trust the God that made you to show you the way. Oh God, as we leave this place, do not release us from your presence. Send us on our way rejoicing. Rejoicing so contagiously that people have to know what happened in this place today. Help us to spread your love, your grace, your joy, and your mercy. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.